Okay, so maybe a tweet like that. So, okay. uh, so first of all, thanks uh, to sorry, thanks to the organizers for um, giving me the opportunity to uh, to speak here. So cosmology at uh, is a uh, quite an ambitious uh, title. I recognize. So I, I of course I will talk about. Uh, uh, some aspects uh, of uh, cosmology that, that have been worked out uh, here uh, with a very personal uh, perspective, okay? Um, so since uh, we like uh, uh, timelines, uh, I also draw uh, a timeline uh, starting from uh, uh, the beginning of uh, IPHT to today. And uh, as we know, cosmology didn't appear uh, at the beginning uh, at IPHT, but uh, rather in the middle, and I think uh, this was uh, uh, one of the first person uh, um, working on that was uh, Richard uh, Schaeffer, who moved from uh, nuclear physics to, uh, to cosmology. Um, then uh, other people uh, uh, joined, uh, so uh, Francis and, uh, and Patrick were a PhD student of, uh, of Richard. Uh, Philippe uh, uh, moved into, into cosmology later on. And then I have to mention that uh, many other, uh, th there were very important contributions from uh, other people, like Carlos, for instance, that was mentioned earlier, Christophe, uh, somewhere here, uh, Geraldine, uh, Marco, Chiara, um, that work on aspects uh, uh, slightly different from what I will uh, discuss here. So their picture is not there, but uh, morally they are, they are, of course, uh, also there. Okay. Uh, why does this vibrate? Vibrate? Uh, no. Okay. Very strange. <laughs> okay, so uh, <coughs> during these years, uh, um, the standard, uh, what is called the standard cosmological model, uh, was sort of established uh, during the time. So the idea that uh, the universe is described by uh, general relativity on, uh, on last case, that uh, the universe is expanding, uh, um, satisfies uh, uh, Einstein's equations, uh, uh, that uh, structures formed by gravi gravitational attraction and collapse, uh, thanks to the fact that uh, uh, there is uh, some form of uh, cold uh, dark matter. Uh, later on in 98, we discovered that the universe, uh, uh, that the acceleration, that the expansion of the universe is, uh, is accelerating. Uh, it can be explained by, by some very small uh, uh, cosmological constant. Uh, and also, uh, early on, the universe was very hot, uh, and uh, during uh, the Big Bang, uh, all the elements were, uh, were produced. Okay. Um, this uh, picture of the universe survived, uh, uh, I would say, pretty well, uh, modulo some uh, tensions that are still uh, uh, there today, uh, sur survived this last uh, 25 years. But of course, there are many, many questions. And, uh, uh, well, today the, the goal of cosmology is to try to address these questions. Like, for instance, how did the universe begin? What, what are uh, really the initial conditions? Um, so, w what is the, the energy content of the universe? What is dark matter, for instance? Uh, is the universe uh, uh, what is the dark energy? And, and also, what are the, the physical laws uh, describing the universe? On, on last case, uh, uh, can we trust the general relativity? Can we put uh, uh, strong constraints on that? Is, uh, um, do we need uh, some sort of modification uh, beyond general relativity, et cetera? Okay. And these are the, the questions that, uh, that uh, have been uh, addressed uh, here at the PhD. So going back to um, the timeline, uh, I arrived uh, more or less in, in the middle of, uh, of this uh, history. And uh, um, other people joined later. For instance, Pierre arrived uh, very recently. Uh, I, I want to give also credit to, to, um, to many students at postdoc that uh, have been here uh, during all these uh, all these times uh, previously. Uh, some other students at postdoc that were here until uh, until very recently, and then the, the new uh, the new people that join uh, recently. And uh, be assured that I will not uh, ask you to name uh, each of them uh, with. The, and, and, and give, uh, give me their, their contribution. Okay. Uh, but I just wanted to, uh, to say that uh, uh, also people that are no, no longer here have contributed to, to this. Okay. Um, so these have been uh, years uh, extremely rich of, uh, of data, uh, and uh, that to us uh, have been extremely important. So uh, one of the, the most important uh, observable 
uh, for cosmology uh, in the early 2000 and and, uh, and later on with Planck and um, between 2010 and 2018 uh, um, was the cosmic microwave background uh, anisotropy. Okay. These uh, are uh, um, are photons. Uh, that uh, are uh, coming to us uh, uh, from uh, from the when the universe was uh, 400,000 uh, years old. At the time, atoms uh, recombined, so photons uh, uh, were free, uh, were no longer inter interacting with atoms, and uh, and they, they were released at the time. And uh, what we see today here is a sort of a picture, okay, uh, really uh, really a, a photograph, a picture of the universe uh, at the time. Um, now, th these fluctuations that you see here are very small, are tiny, are 10 to the minus 5. Um, and uh, th there is a model which explains both uh, why the universe is, uh, is uh, so much uh, homogeneous, uh, because, uh, uh, because the, this uh, particular uh, location of the universe where uh, these photons uh, came from uh, were not in, uh, in causal contact in principle. So the model that explains uh, why this, uh, uh, this uh, temperature is uh, so much homogeneous and why it has uh, also tiny fluctuations is, uh, is, is inflation. So it's one, uh, one of the models, probably the most compelling uh, model uh, at the moment, uh, uh, wh which basically assumes that the universe was dominated by a, by a phase of uh, accelerating uh, expansion, while well, similar to what we observe today. And uh, uh, this phase was, uh, was uh, driven by uh, supposedly uh, one scalar field called the inflaton uh, that was on average uh, homogeneous, uh, but also had uh, some uh, quantum uh, fluctuations, okay, like, uh, like everything. Uh, so in principle, you can describe these fluctuations, uh, each Fourier mode uh, of uh, these fluctuations as a quantum uh, harmonic oscillator. Uh, with a time-dependent uh, spring constant because, uh, because of expansion, okay? And uh, this uh, spring constant uh, um, became uh, very small uh, during uh, the, the inflationary times, non-adiabatically, so that uh, what we initially uh, thought that uh, uh, was a, a vacuum state, uh, at the end uh, uh, of inflation became a highly excited state. And this explained the generation of... Uh, of, uh, of uh, perturbations uh, during, during inflation. Um, well, uh, inflaton perturbation imply also metric perturbations. So for instance, the spatial metric can be written in this way, where theta is a tiny fluctuation describing the, the primordial uh, perturbation. And, uh, and this is the scale factor des describing the homogeneous uh, expansion. Now, we think, uh, I mean, uh, since uh, uh, these fluctuations come from the ground state of uh, an harmonic oscillator, supposedly they, they should be uh, very Gaussian. And in fact, uh, this is what, uh, what uh, we measured with, uh, with the CMB. A way of uh, parameterizing this non gaussianity is called uh, this, this uh, strange parameter, is a number. Uh, sorry, it's not a number, but it's a function, it's a function of, uh, of uh, momenta in general. But Anyway, let's take it as a, as a, as a simple uh, number uh, here. We, we, we tell us how uh, the three-point function, uh, which, this, which should be zero for a Gaussian uh, distribution, is related to the square of, uh, of the two-point function, okay? Um, so there is a, a, a very nice way to understand, uh, at least in, in a certain limit, uh, why the universe uh, should be uh, should be Gaussian, or let's say why this FNL uh, should be extremely small, which is the following. Suppose uh, that I take, uh, um, well, uh, you don't see it very well, but uh, this uh, is supposed to be like pinkish. Uh, uh, so th there is a wave uh, mode that uh, you don't see very well here, but it, it should be there. Okay, here is bluish, uh, here is pink here. And suppose that I, th I, I take a, a very long wavelength mode, whose uh, wavelength is much longer than uh, a Hubble uh, patch, uh, which defines uh, more or less the causal uh, patch uh, in the universe uh, uh, during inflation. So th this wavelength mode is much longer than, than the, the horizon patch uh, uh, during inflation. So at least locally, uh, since uh, this is uh, very long, uh, I should be able to uh, reabsorb it uh, in a redefinition of, uh, of the background uh, expansion, okay? So in a universe where everything originates uh, from, from the same field, uh, from a single inflaton, a long wavelength metric perturbation should be absorbed by, by rescaling of the coordinates, this, this rescaling here. 
which uh, if you go to Fourier, Fourier space uh, uh, is just a rescaling of, uh, of the momentum. Well, these simple arguments can be used to, to draw a, a, um, a relation, uh, which sometimes is called consistency relation between uh, the three-point function in the limit where one of the modes goes to zero, uh, to the, to, to, to the two-point function for the short modes, times the two-point function for the long mode, times something which uh, um, is related to the deviation uh, um, from um, scale invariance of, uh, of the spectrum, okay? So this should be zero for, uh, for a, a perfectly scale invariant uh, spectrum. Um, so what we observe uh, uh, in inflation is, is a spectrum of fluctuations which is uh, not fully scale invariant. However, the deviation from scale invariance are very tiny, okay? And this tells us that uh, FNL uh, is, uh, is, uh, is also tiny. Okay, this, this FNL here, which enters, uh, if you want, uh, in, in, the, in the same way in this, in this relation, is also, is also tiny, okay? This argument uh, does not apply to multi-field to multi models. It does not apply when you have uh, several scalar fields uh, during the universe. And uh, admittedly, this was uh, realized, uh, so I was not here at the time, but was really realized, uh, for was one of the first papers, uh, uh, it was Francis, uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, predict this pattern. Uh, FNL can be larger, okay, over the one or, or, or larger for models where there are more, more than one field. And uh, I, can, I can explain you later uh, why if you want. Uh, so the picture is the following. If you have FNL here, th these are the single field predictions. So there is some uh, small FNL that, that you can compute and you can control. Uh, it's very difficult to detect uh, because uh, uh, CMB, CMB at the time and, and also today excludes some part of the parameter space where this FNL is, uh, is largish. I, I don't remember the exact value, but it's something like uh, uh, of order 10, okay? And then there is a window of, of, uh, of opportunity uh, that, if we, that uh, well, at the time we, we wanted to push uh, uh, th this uh, exclusion uh, as much as possible to unity, but clearly the, the discriminant between different models, uh, single fields and multi fields, uh, lie really here. Okay, there are other, uh, there are other, um, let's say, uh, models of inflation that are discriminated by looking at this window. But this window is very important. Now, already at the time, uh, it was uh, um, it was understood. So, so that there was a <coughs> there was a loophole uh, to, to this, which was the following: we have studied the primordial perturbations, uh, and we have determined that uh, the FNL in primordial perturbations is very tiny. However, in general, uh, you know, you can study. You, you look at the CMB, okay, CMB temperature fluctuations. Uh, these are usually studied uh, in the linear regime. However, if you go to to second order, and, uh, and we know that there are tiny nonlinearities there because uh, GR is, uh, uh, is nonlinear, because uh, uh, the, the species that uh, uh, interact in the universe uh, do it uh, nonlinearly. Um, so in principle, you expect some uh, contribution, uh, some, some uh, uh, contamination uh, to the primordial FNL, uh, which uh, can be of order unity or can even be larger, okay? And for some time, people didn't know what, uh, what the real size of this contribution was. Um, so they, 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 they didn't know. So a way to, to, to study this uh, uh, is uh, to, to build, uh, and, and this has been done, uh, to, to, uh, to build um, a code uh, that solves uh, uh, all the Einstein and Boltzmann equations uh, coupled for all the species in the universe up to second order in the perturbations, okay? So these are very complicated to, to develop, uh, and uh, uh, for some times there were uh, uh, different codes uh, uh, giving slightly different uh, predictions. Um, but this was very important uh, for the interpretation of, uh, of this data. It turns out that uh, if, you, if you go back uh, to, to the argument of uh, uh, the long mode, uh, uh, which by the way I didn't mention it, but was put forward uh, uh, by Madacena for the first uh, time, uh, you can use uh, the same argument to try to, uh, to predict uh, the, uh, the three-point function of the CMB and isotopies in, uh, in, the, in, the limit, uh, in the limit of a, of a very long wavelength mode because uh, um, 
at, at the time of recombination, there were very long uh, wavelength uh, perturbations that are inside the horizon uh, today, inside the causal horizon today, so we can, uh, we can observe it. But they were longer than the horizon patch uh, at the time. Okay. So by using this argument, you can, uh, through a coordinate transformation, uh, through, uh, you, 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 you can sort of predict uh, uh, in, in the limit where one of the multiple of, uh, of um, the, the three-point function of the CM and B anisotropies is much smaller than the other two, um, you can have a full analytical expression for, for the CMB uh, uh, fluctuations. And, uh, and finally, with some work, uh, uh, we managed to, uh, let's say, to, uh, to have a full agreement with, between all the contributions coming from, uh, uh, from the full uh, Einstein-Boltzmann uh, equations solving uh, to, the, to, to the squeeze limit uh, uh, approximation. So from, uh, from the CMB, I would like to move to, to another uh, probe, which uh, has been very important uh, for, for cosmology, which is uh, Lasker structure. Uh, one of the most famous experiment was uh, uh, SDSS, uh, uh, developed uh, also um, uh, uh, by IFU, IFU, for instance, and uh, more recently uh, DS. Um, why, why last researchers are, are important? Um, the idea is that uh, since uh, last researchers surveys are three-dimensional, so they, they also probe uh, depth uh, uh, with respect to CMB fluctuations that are purely uh, two-dimensional, the number of modes, uh, so the, the, the number of pixels or, of information that you can get from, uh, from the surveys uh, uh, it can, be, can be pa come uh, uh, progressively more important uh, than the one that you can find in the CMB. So for instance, today we are uh, roughly here. We start uh, collecting uh, uh, a number of uh, almost that, that is uh, larger than the CMB. And why this is important? Well, first of all, uh, this could, could uh, be useful to improve uh, our understanding of initial conditions. So the constraints on FNL uh, uh, are inversely proportional to the, to the square root of, uh, of the num number of moles, as you can expect, uh, and also improve uh, our understanding of the energy content uh, of the universe. Surveys are uh, at later time, so they, they probe uh, the, the energy content uh, today, um, and also of, uh, of uh, gravitational uh, sector. So well, tell us uh, constraint, uh, for instance, general relativity on very large scales, or tell us if there is some sort of uh, modifications of gravity. And as you know very well, a very important uh, um, observation for, uh, for uh, EPHT is, uh, is Euclid, uh, which has been launched in, uh, in January. Um, and uh, apart from providing us uh, uh, very nice uh, pictures, uh, <laughs> you, <laughs> you want to cheat. <laughs> Apart from providing us a very nice picture, Euclid brings us also a lot of uh, challenges, okay? Because uh, contrary to the CMB, where the fluctuations are extremely small and therefore uh, easy to treat uh, with linear perturbations, um, observables in the Lasky structures uh, are uh, nonlinear, okay? And in particular, when you go to, to small scales uh, where you can collect uh, many more modes, uh, so much more information, they become nonlinear. So, uh, and moreover, you have a lot of uh, complicated uh, astrophysics to, to, to understand if you want to um, model uh, these observables. So the, there has been two things that uh, have been very important traditionally at uh, EPHT, and I think that uh, the germs of, uh, of these things uh, really go back uh, to when uh, cosmology at EPHT was born, uh, so in the 90s, okay, which, which is modeling uh, observables for instance, the, the clustering of galaxies, the way galaxies are distributed in the universe, uh, or gravitational lensing, uh, so the deviation of photons uh, in the universe by the, the, the background of, uh, of dark matter, on linear, but also on uh, nonlinear scales, uh, and most importantly, with high accuracy. So, uh, uh, so it's very important to understand the errors when you do these calculations. And of course, you can do this uh, uh, you can make this prediction with, uh, with embodied simulations, for instance, but what has been important uh, and it's even more important today, 
uh, it's uh, having developed uh, a lot of uh, tools uh, to understand uh, this, uh, this, this growth of, uh, of perturbation and these observables uh, uh, via an analytical approaches. That uh, I think here at EPHT uh, got inspiration from uh, statistical physics, from quantum field theory, from a lot of methods that were uh, uh, around uh, uh, at the time. Another thing that, uh, uh, that has been developed a lot at EPHT is the, the exploration of, uh, of uh, theories, uh, in particular theories of new physics, so extension of, uh, of general relativity or modified gravity, and the connection between uh, these theories and, uh, and observations, so the, the phenomenology of this new physics uh, that I've seen a, a lot of importance, for instance, uh, um, uh, Philippe uh, or Patrick has uh, worked a lot on, uh, on that and myself. Okay, let me, let me give you an example of, uh, of something that has been developed uh, at IPHT uh, concerning the, the last researchers, uh, which is related again uh, to the story of the long mode that, uh, that I showed you before. So you all know that uh, in general relativity you cannot uh, distinguish, at least locally, an acceleration from, uh, from a gravitational uh, field. Okay, this is called the equivalence uh, principle. <coughs> Uh, on, on another way of, uh, of, of explaining this is that uh, uh, locally you can remove uh, the gradient uh, of the gravitational potential by a coordinate transformation, okay, by going in a free falling frame. Okay, you can use this uh, again. Uh, so, so notice this is, this is different. Before you we removed uh, a, a, a long wave mode, and now we are removing the gradient uh, of a long wave mode in, in a sense. But you, you, you can uh, again uh, uh, do some. Uh, uh, some coordinate transformation uh, to, to the density, to, to correlation functions uh, in the density field. Here uh, I call this density field uh, delta. And, uh, um, and find uh, um, consistency relations for the large scale structures. So find the relation between, uh, uh, for instance, here is a three point function with a, with a two point function here. Uh, and of course, you can generalize this to. Uh, to, n, uh, to any endpoint function in a limit where some of the, of the momenta uh, goes to zero, okay? Uh, I haven't mentioned this before, but this is, uh, if you want, the cosmological uh, analog of uh, Weinberg's of theorems for, for, uh, for, for uh, cosmic fields, okay? For dark matter fluctuations or, or galaxy fluctuations in the, in the sky. Uh, this has been studied, this relation has been studied a lot, uh, and they turn out to be particularly imp uh, important uh, to establish uh, very accurate uh, uh, observables in the, in the last structure, in particular to understand the smearing uh, of, uh, of uh, the so-called baryon baryonic acoustic uh, oscillations due to long wavelength perturbations. Um, so how much time? No, okay. Let me skip, uh, let me skip this. Yeah, we... And uh, let me go to, to finally a, a new observable that uh, become recently very important, which are uh, gravitational waves. So there was a breakthrough, as you all know, in uh, 2015 uh, with the first observations. Um, and uh, well, this be became very important for cosmology. Uh, <coughs> In, uh, in particular, okay, th this observation was, uh, was very important. It's the merger of uh, two noto stars and uh, uh, the emission from, uh, from this of, uh, uh, si simultaneously of uh, uh, light, uh, uh, gamma ray and, uh, and gravitational waves. Uh, this uh, can be important for cosmology because it can be used to measure H0, so the, the Hubble constant. But it was also important for, uh, for another reason because uh, um, because this type constraint on, uh, on, uh, on the difference in speed uh, uh, of light and the speed of, uh, of gravitons uh, can be used, uh, could be used to rule out a lot of uh, uh, theories that uh, were studied at, at that time. So in general, modify gravity, uh, spontaneously break uh, Lorentz invariance, it acts uh, like a sort of medium for gravitational waves. So uh, in some, uh, in, in many of these theories, uh, um, gravitons are, are slower, for instance, and, uh, and, and so, uh, well, th these, uh, the details of, uh, of this uh, are not very important, but these were the sort of uh, benchmark theories that uh, have been developed, and, uh, and these observations uh, 
could, uh, could uh, rule out a, a lot of uh, the parameter space, so it was extremely, extremely relevant. So I want to go to, to the future, just to mention, uh, um, uh, let's say, observables. Uh, the CMB will, uh, we see a new, a new era with, uh, of exploration, in particular of the polarization, uh, in about uh, 10 years. Euclid will give us a lot of work in, uh, in its interpretation and in establishing uh, uh, very accurately the, um, the, um, well, the cosmological parameters and, uh, and the outcomes of this. And uh, also gravitational waves have uh, started to play an important role in this, uh, in this lab. Many people among us uh, started to work uh, on that, uh, also on other aspects uh, related to, to modify gravity. Uh, and I think I can conclude here. Le let me just uh, tell you before going to lunch that uh, I I'm very thankful for EPHT. It, it has been really an honor to work uh, here during this time. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Filippo. Is there any question or comment? Uh, people are very angry. Yes. Bertrand. Do you believe in a modification of uh, gravity? Well, uh, no, I think, uh, so my, my honest opinion is, is that I think we will uh, be able to accurately constrain uh, general relativity. So establish that uh, general relativity is correct. Nevertheless, uh, I think that uh, all these uh, uh, strange uh, things that uh, have been around for some time are important. And the reason is that uh, uh, we need uh, some sort of uh, uh, benchmark or some sort of, some sort of alternative models uh, uh, to which compare general relativity. Otherwise, it's very difficult to put constraints on, uh, on, uh, on very large scales without, uh, without that. I mean, the, the um, parameterizing uh, what is beyond the general relativity has been something that uh, uh, even Eddington, after uh, the, the formulation of general relativity, started to do immediately. So there is a sense in which uh, uh, these theories uh, have uh, their own importance if you want to parameterize the deviation. So then believing, uh, you know, I think it's important to, to have data, go there and uh, try to measure. If you tell me if whether I bet uh, in uh, seeing modifications of gravity, no, I don't. I'm very ignorant. What are these CMB polarization experiments that you are uh, scheduling? So these are. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 this is no, no, it's no, no, it's okay. <laughs> so, so. Uh, a, a very important, uh, a very important observable in the CMB is polarization because uh, polarization uh, can be affected. So there, there is uh, one part of one sector of the polarization which are called the MIMOS uh, that uh, uh, where uh, um, uh, that uh, are imprinted uh, by gravitational waves produced during inflation. So this is one of the most important uh, observables that there will be in the future. And uh, observing uh, a, a primordial gravitational wave background will be a total breakthrough, so, okay, because it would confirm uh, that if, uh, inflation uh, has taken place. Uh, these experiments are pushing uh, what has been done until now uh, to its limit. So there are experiments, uh, uh, there, there is this CMB stage four experiments that are mostly uh, U.S. days uh, that are taking place in the, at the South Pole and the, the Atacama Desert on the ground, but there is also uh, the idea of sending a new satellite uh, similar to WM Planck called Lightbird. This is more European to detect uh, this. Uh, this uh, so this is that Antarctica will down in the meantime. It's not. Uh, it's, not uh, it's not melting. You're right. Yeah. Why well, you mentioned my uh, my name is uh, there is a, a memorandum of understanding between uh, CERA and PHT and the experiments in uh, USA and uh, in uh, Chile and Antarctic Pole. Uh, that's all right. So any other question or comment? So if there's none, so let's thank Filippo. Thank you.